real present God. The nations rage, the kingdoms talk, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress, real present God. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war seeds to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Real, present God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Real, present God. Real, present God. Real, present God. God. I love that bell at the end. Awesome. Um, in addition to that, if you are involved in the the music ministry, the the band uh, part of the rock, uh, not just today, but have have been a part of that, and maybe you do uh, different weeks. Would you stand, please? Come on. These are some people in our congregation that God has gifted mightily with the gift of music, and I am so thankful for them. And let's show our appreciation to them and to the Lord with our applause. You can sit down. Thank you. Exactly. We need to cheer them on. The reason I said that because, you know, I, I gave them the, the music for this song like maybe at the most two weeks ago. I finally got my hands on it. And they did it today for us. That is just phenomenal. You guys did awesome. What a great, great uh, job you do. And, and every week in supplying uh, the music, a way to praise our God through song. So thank you. And that leads us into what we've been talking about all this series through this uh, Real Present God series, talking about the Psalms as the Psalms being the song book and the prayer book of God's people throughout the ages. That some of the, prayer, the, the prayers in the, the Psalms that uh, we read and pray are the same ones that people have been saying th- for <laughs> all throughout history. So it's a way that we can connect with the faithful that are now in the presence of the Lord uh, in in heaven, that we uh, are connected to them as a broader family uh, of faith in the the not yet of heaven for us. So, um, and we looked at uh, last time, uh, Psalm 46, 7, we spent a lot of time looking uh, at that. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. You notice that word Lord is all in capital letters. That is that way because it is translated as such because that's God's personal name, Yahweh, which is the God of the promise, the one who keeps his promises. So the one who keeps his promises is, uh, has, is, the, is the Lord of heaven's armies, and he's here. He's here with us. The God of Israel, that's, that's Jacob. God has an f- earthly family as well, and a spiritual one. And we're part of that family through our baptism into Jesus. Okay, And we said that that. That God is our refuge and our strength no matter what. That no matter what is going on, though the mountains roar, you know, or the mountains uh, crumble and the oceans roar. Got my metaphors mixed up there. That even though that happens, the God of Jacob, our God, is with us. He is our refuge no matter what. And we think back to two weeks ago, that though the trouble is real, so is the refuge. 
If there's nothing else that you remember about this series, I would hope and pray that you would remember that, especially in the middle of that trouble that you are in or will be in. Notice I didn't say if. That even though your trouble is real, so is your refuge in Jesus. And he's present. So we've talked about present, uh, we've talked about real, and now what's left? Real, present, real, present, God. God. And today we want to talk about how we have a God that is all-powerful, all-personal, and that He is for us in Jesus. That's the main point of today's message. Amen? So be it. Yeah. All powerful, all personal, and that He is for us in Jesus. You see my shirt? What does my shirt say, brethren? You read that? Need your glasses? He loves us despite how messy we are inside. He loves us despite how messy we are inside. This all powerful, all personal God loves you and me despite or in spite of how messy you and I are inside. I like wearing this shirt. Two reasons. One, because it feels good, comfortable. But most importantly, this describes me. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. And even though I'm a mess, this all-powerful, all-personal God loves me, loves you, and is for you and for me in Jesus Now, there's a video that I'm going to show you right now that was shown at the National Youth Gathering, and it became an instant hit. Now, I don't know if that was because it was just a place at the, just the right time in the mass event that people were starting to lose attention, and all of a sudden it brought them back in or, or, or what, but I, 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 it doesn't matter because God works in and through all of it. But this video is powerful, and I want you to look for the contrast here, okay? Look for the contrast here, and perhaps, perhaps you can find yourself in it. The video is called God Made Carl. Let's take a look at it. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. God spoke into the void, and the earth, sun, and universe was created. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God shaped the mountains of the earth, the tallest peak standing majestic against the sky. The snow-covered tips reaching toward the ether are a monument to your power. We gaze in wonder at their heights. Your majesty pronounced by your power. The God who created the mountains also created Gar. Right. Oh, I gotta fix my contact. Is that my cue? Uh, I, what's my line? Ah. Hey, I'm Carl. 
God filled the depths of the earth with oceans. Oceans so deep that humans have not seen all the wonders that they hold. The sea swirls with fantastic creatures of awe and fear. From schools of fish crossing the depths to the ferocious power of the great white shark, we see your hand in it all. The God who created these oceans also created Carl. Ah. I forgot my toothbrush. The forest and the jungles rich with life, teeming with the vast creation of your hand. Animals and insects exist in a wondrous cycle of life, filling the air with sound and trees with movement. Birds soar high above while lions roam the vast plains. Look at the Bengal tiger, the symmetry, the perfection of design. The God who made the jungles and the forests of the world also made Carl. I uh, came in fourth in my fantasy football league this year. There were four teams. The sun, the bright star of the morning, anchor of our solar system, burns with light. Our days arrive and fall as the earth spins, rotating in perfect harmony with day and night. The days pass to weeks, the weeks to months, and the months close to a year. In the wonder of time, we see your hand, Lord, the God who created the sun and watches our days spin to years, also created Carl. Uh, if, if I... If I had to put one on top, gluten-free Wheatons, best cereal. The human body is a marvel of creation. On the microscopic level, cells combine to form organs, blood, and veins. Ah! Our mind's complex machinery of synapses and neurons, the gift of consciousness with the power to think, and the ability to praise. Lord, your hand has formed the wonders of the human brain. We are made in your image. The God who created the complexity of the human mind also created Carl. I, uh, I love the smell of freshly cut grass. The God who took from nothing and created the universe with all the beautiful harmony, the sun and the planets, the earth teeming with life, from the majestic mountains to the untold depths of the oceans, the jungles and the forests, to all the wonders of nature. The God who created life, who created the mind, who knows the numbers of the hairs on your head, that God also created Carl. So I, uh, I just, I just learned how to whip a nene. But like, now I gotta learn this whole whoa thing. Woo! The Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. The God of all things who has created all things and given life to the universe also created Carl. No. Oh. I talked to like three whole people today. See, the point of that is in all the little idiosyncrasies that 
that Carl has and that you and I have, we still are loved by this all-powerful, personal God who is for us in Jesus. I want to put up this image for you. It's a fingerprint. And you'll notice that if in the fingerprint is the cross. And what I would hope that that image would reinforce for you is that your identity is in Jesus. Your value and worth is found in Him. Why do I say that? Because Satan and the darkness and the corrupted world around us, even the own sin inside of us, would tell us something totally opposite. They try to convince you and me that our identity is in what people say about us, how they think about us, how we perform or don't perform. What people say about us on social media. How people interact with us on that media. Or we are defined by what the culture says we should look like, feel like, or think like. Whether that be through television, movies, or anything online. You see, the darkness and Satan are trying to pull us away from God, the one who is all-powerful, who is all-personal, and is for us in Jesus. Satan and the darkness and evil is very real. But, But so is the refuge, and his name is Jesus. Why do I say that? Because it's very easy to think that the darkness and Satan is winning. Did you know that in the last week, two weeks, that there have been two individuals in Seward County alone who have taken their own life? I read an article uh, just yesterday that the number of airmen in the United States Air Force who have taken their life has doubled in the last five years. The darkness is real. Satan is real. The depression, the mental illness is real. But so is the refuge. So is the all-powerful, all-personal God who is for us in Jesus There is nothing that can separate us from that love. There is nothing so hurtful, so despairing, so down and out for us that together with the help of Jesus and the followers of Jesus together that we cannot walk through together. Because this Jesus, this God who is for us in Jesus gave his very best in Jesus so that we could have this abundant life. Not just the abundant life of heaven, but an abundant life now, this side of heaven, as he continues to redeem and restore all things in him.
I want to take you to Jesus' own words in Mark 15. Then at 3 o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? You see, when Jesus said those words as he hangs on the cross, suffering and dying in our place for our sin and the sins of the world, as he says those words, every Jewish kid would have known that Jesus was citing, making a citation from Psalm 22, verse 1. Psalm 22, verse 1 says this. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? And they also would have known what comes next in verse 2. Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. And hopefully they also, because they knew the Psalms from memory, would not forget and be encouraged by the last two parts of Psalm 22, which say this. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. Everything he has done. You see, in this moment on the cross, Jesus Jesus is identifying with us, with our, our suffering, with our humanity in its corrupt and brokenness. But he's also in that moment pointing to the promises of God, pointing to the promises of a new kingdom, of a new reality that he is accomplishing. How does our God answer suffering? Your suffering and mine He's personal. He, he, he doesn't answer it with philosophical statements or rhetoric. He answers it in the embodiment of his own son in Jesus, in his own body. And, and, and our God is personal, is powerful. And in that embodiment of our suffering and connecting, identifying with us, he defeats sin and death and Satan forever, demonstrating that power. And in that moment when Jesus cries out those words in Aramaic, as his friends have bailed on him and left... And he's there dying a horrific criminal death. It seems that even God himself has abandoned him. It seems that way. But that is the farthest thing from the truth. Because in that moment, God is present God is acting in his Son to accomplish the salvation of the world. Providing for you and me and countless others who believe forgiveness and life. And a hope that is very sure and certain. From time to time, I... I, uh, bounce around like little taglines that perhaps we could have at the rock. And one that I thought of one time was uh, three, three phrases that began with the word H. I don't know why I picked H. It was just something that would help people remember, perhaps. But it went like this. 
at the rock we will strive with with the help of the Holy Spirit to, to provide healing from yesterday, help for today, and hope to face tomorrow. We have a God who's for us in Jesus at the cross. Thorn encircled head. And at his resurrection, arms raised high in victory over sin, death, and Satan. Put that image up, please. That's fantastic. See that casket there? <laughs> At the National Youth Gathering, Jesus literally went and opened that casket and took people by the hand. And the black corruption that some of them were wearing around them all came off. It was pretty cool. Like in you know, all on cue, he raised his hands up like that and the black shroud comes off and... The place is lit up with lights and everybody has these bright colored shirts on. It was fantastic. I cried. That is perhaps a vision, of a small glimpse of what it'll look like on that day. That hope that is real and present right now for you and for me. And God gives us the privilege of bringing that real presence of himself into the lives of others to be, to be healing, help, and hope for people where we live, work, and play. One of my favorite images from, from the gathering, what I call an act of kindness, is, is this one. At that moment in the... In the uh, Drama, I guess you could say. Show that next picture of those two young ladies. That girl that's being embraced. I mean, she was part of the drama. She knew what was going to happen, but she was so overcome by what was being portrayed in that moment that it brought her to tears. And the girl next to her thought that she needed to be comforted and encouraged and needed someone to rejoice with. At the gathering, there was various ways in which people were worked in and through by the power of the Holy Spirit, where God's presence and His very real presence was known. I want to show you just a few stats from here. Just remarkable. Over one million meals were prepared for starving children. One million in five days. One thou, over 1,000 kits were built for the homeless. Over 900 inches of hair was donated for cancer patients. Over 570 letters were written to veterans to encourage them and thank them. And over 460 units of blood donated. Those are random acts of kindness, they won't probably ever see the people that will receive those gifts. But God will work in and through that to bring healing, help, and hope to people. So um, my question for you, and I'm going to backtrack. I got ahead of myself. My question for you today is this. What could kindness and generosity look like in my life today? What could that look like? What could that look like for this, this forever family right here? I mean, we know what it looks like now for the most part, but what could it look like? And what could it look like in your life and mine? As we trust in this real present God to work in and through us and allow Him to do that, Because Ephesians 2 says this, remember this. I shared this with uh, the, uh, the Bible study group this morning. For we are God's masterpiece. Remember that? 
He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Long ago. And so I want to leave you with these two sections of Scripture. The end of Psalm 46 goes like this. God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. And then our theme verse from Mark 4. He, meaning Jesus, got up and ordered the wind to stop. He said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. I pray that as we trust and put our faith into action, trust in God, and trust that He will calm our fears even as the oceans roar and the mountains crumble and are shaken, that we will truly believe that the Lord of angel armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. No matter what. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being real with us. Thank you for being present in our lives always. Especially when the trouble is very real. Lord, also thank you for being an all-powerful yet all-personal God and being for us in Jesus and working in and through other followers of Jesus when we experience that trouble to bring us help and healing and hope. Lord, I pray today that anyone who is experiencing that deep depression, that deep darkness, would be connected to someone in some way, somehow, would, would be encouraged and brought out of that. That that light of a Jesus follower would, would pierce that darkness and pull them out. And that one that who was experiencing that, that, that darkness and that depression would, would let those around them know what they're experiencing, what they're feeling, and what they're sensing so that they can be helped. That healing can happen. And that hope can spring up again. Make it so, Lord, by the power of your Spirit working through us. In Jesus' strong and precious name we pray. Amen.